Hi, my name is BC Hoffman, and I will be your guest host today on Food Deconstructed. And today, we are doing blowtorch recipes. So I'm actually super excited. We're gonna do a five course meal just in time for Valentine's Day. This is a really romantic, special meal right here. So guys, you can move the ladies. Ladies, you can move the guys. We're gonna start with a torched bell pepper soup. So this is gonna have a little kick to it and at the same time we're gonna have corn incorporated in it. It's gonna be really simple and easy. All you need at home to do this is a torch, a knife, the ingredients obviously, and a blender. So we're gonna start off, we've got four red bell peppers right here. Now the best thing to do with these bell peppers, you're gonna cut off the top, you're gonna remove the stems and the seed, which is so simple, it literally pops off like a hat right there. Boom. And then you're gonna just tap off all the excess seeds right there. And then cut this, pretty much you can have it. I'm gonna cut it in threes. With this, it's really nice. I'm just removing the gum. Now, I know a lot of times you're like, man, I love using fire. Especially when you're in the kitchen and you're like, I could totally go for seeing someone just use it for flambéing or any of that stuff. Whenever you're sitting in a restaurant and you have one of those open kitchens and all of a sudden in the background, in the back of your eye, you see a flame pop up and you're like, oh, that's awesome. That is what I love about using blow torches in the kitchen is because this is a more controlled heat. You actually get to control your temperature on your flame, and at the same time, you get to actually move it around. So you can do this anywhere you want. I'm just gonna throw those in some sheet pans, and, and make sure when you are doing this, you have something underneath your tray that's going to basically be catching any excess flame or heat. You don't wanna cause a fire. And make sure you don't use anything that's flammable. Plastic cutting board will melt. Um, wooden cutting board, you will sear possibly depending on how long you have that torch on even catch fire. So make sure that you have nothing like that around. Metal, 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 metal. There's a number of different torches you can use when you are cooking with a blowtorch. So blowtorches come in a number of sizes, shapes, and for different uses. Obviously, it's not just for welding and soldering. It's also for cooking. You can use it for anything. Um, so the different sizes that you can get, this is just a couple of the examples that I have right here. So this is just a classic butane kitchen torch right here. Uh, the top you can get at any kitchen store, even some hardware stores sell it. It's about $25 to $35 for the top, and then the actual butane itself is two bucks. So simple, easy, and then you can just pop this on on top of any of the butane that you get. Another one, this is a classic kitchen brulee torch. So when you're thinking about making something like a creme brulee, this is what you'd want to use right here. And then you have something as minuscule and small as a pencil torch. Now pencil torches are great for using in detailed marzipan or any type of baking that you're going to be doing that needs a lot more attention and um, smaller uh, surface that you're going to be using. Hands down, awesome. But what I really like is if you're gonna use a flame, you might as well go big. The big boy right here. So what I love about this one, and what I would totally recommend when you're shopping for your blowtorch in the kitchen, because again, you go to the hardware store, there's a couple different options. You totally wanna go for one that you can control the flame, higher, lower, and that has a quick push on as opposed to using a spark to turn it on. So I have my bell peppers right here. I'm turning on. As soon as you hear that gas on, that means it's ready to go. And you just shoot it on. <laughs> so I'm just gonna touch up on my bell peppers. And I want the skin on the bell peppers to blister. I want it to bubble and blister and get a nice black almost color to it. There we go. Then once that happens, we're literally just gonna put them in this bowl and then cover them in saran wrap. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because it'll take off the skin that much easier. So we're gonna cover it in saran wrap, put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes and uh, let the steam basically pull the skin off your bell pepper. All right, so I just torched my bell peppers. 
I throw them in my bowl and I put some saran wrap over top. I'm about to put this in the freezer for 10 minutes. It doesn't need to go in the freezer. The main trick is trapping in that steam. So whether you use a plastic container at home with a lid, make sure it's a tight lid, or whether you use a brown paper bag, as long as you have something that's gonna keep that steam in there, so that way you can just literally do this to the pepper and it'll peel off all that black skin from the outside. Now, what it does is it actually traps it, so when you're actually torching it on the sheet pan, you're actually trapping it on one side. So as soon as you pull it off the sheet pan, the steam's underneath. I know you're thinking, wow, how's it, how's it actually gonna come off and how are you accumulating steam, especially when you're torching multiple bell peppers? It's underneath, so as soon as you pour them into your bowl, you'll see the steam escaping. While that's in the freezer, we're gonna actually take a half onion and we're just gonna give that a quick one too. The best way to do it, cut off the top, not the root end, but the stem end, you're gonna cut off and then you're just gonna cut right down the middle on your onion there. You're just gonna trim down a little bit. So basically what that's doing is that's holding together your onion. So I'm just gonna give this bad boy a quick cut. Make sure you don't use a non-stick at home when you are doing that because what's gonna happen is if you're torching from the top, the non-stick is actually Teflon or whatever you're using, is, is there to protect it from actually having anything stick to it and there's no heat that's coming in from the top. So when you put the heat directly on top of it, you're actually gonna end up losing that film and it's gonna flake off. Don't wanna do that. And I've got two cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna give them a quick smash and then give them a quick chop as well. And then in my actual saute pan, I've got a beautiful tablespoon of butter and I'm going to melt that bad boy down a little bit. Get your torch ready, boys and girls. Now the further you hold it away from the source, uh, it will actually get a nice cooking done without actually burning anything. The closer you hold it, obviously, it's gonna cause a quicker reaction. So if you look at the flame, in the center part right there, you'll see a beautiful blue flame around the actual torch that's coming out right there. That is what's gonna be your hottest point. So I've got my melted butter. It's almost all melted. I'm gonna keep going for a little bit longer before I throw my onions and my garlic in. So melt your butter because that'll actually make it quicker and easier to uh, cook up and saute any of your items because that's gonna be basically basting your whatever product you're putting in, in this case the onions and the garlic, and that'll help with cooking it that much quicker. So I'm gonna throw my onions right in here and my garlic, which I've nicely torched. Make sure you get all the drippings from the butter in there as well. Two tablespoons of tomato paste I'm throwing in here. Then my bell peppers, they are almost completely ready to go in, but before I throw those in, I'm just going to take off the saran wrap. So remember I was telling you how the skin will flake right off? Now that I'm done with that, if you notice, I'm literally able just to brush the skin, the burnt charred skin, right off from my bell pepper. I don't know if you've ever been to an Italian market and you end up getting like the canned roasted red peppers that they have. This is what you have in a can with water or oil. Okay, so I've got my peppers in here. I removed the skin and now I'm just gonna add, last but not least, my chicken stock. I've got about two cups of chicken stock right here. So I'm gonna start it off on a very low setting because there is liquid in here. And then gradually pick it up to a higher setting. So that's about ready right there. I'm gonna shut this off. I'm ready to move on, torching my corn. So there's two different ways we can do this. Now, first off, I'm gonna use the corn for two different purposes. One is gonna be for garnish, and the other is going to be strictly to put into my soup. This one I'm gonna leave right on the cob, and this one I'm gonna throw into my sheet pan. Mommy, I want popcorn! Ready to actually move on to my cob. And this is just plain fun. So, what I would suggest doing for this one, go about halfway up, holding on right there. 
Okay, so that's done. So this is what your corn should look like at home, guys. Now I can cut that right off. The best way to do that, cut in half and then cut it right down. And this is just gonna add a nice, rich sweetness to our soup. We're gonna also add in right now some of our cilantro. Just a quick chop, because this is going into our blender. You got a teaspoon of cayenne and a teaspoon of crushed red pepper flakes going in here. One cup of cream, and that's also gonna go right into our soup. So I'm gonna throw a little salt and pepper in just to season it, just a little bit, but I would be a little bit more liberal with the salt. Always make sure, especially when you're using a mixer this powerful, always start it off at the lowest. So, so I'm just doing that to puree up all that corn right there. I'm gonna actually move it back down to about a two. Let it do its thing on its own, and while that's going on, I'm actually gonna work on my slurry. We got about a tablespoon of cornstarch right here. I'm gonna throw in to a little bit bigger of a bowl, and I'm gonna mix that with the remainder of my chicken stock. So we'll say about, mm. So I'm gonna throw this in here. It's gonna take about two minutes. I'm gonna crank this bad boy as high as it can get. It's gonna warm up my soup and I'm going to be able to dish this bad boy out. And the beautiful thing about being in the blender is I can just pour it right into my bowl. <laughs> and I'm ready to pour it right into my bowl. So I've got my bowl sitting right over here. So I'm gonna pour about, uh, say about two cups into the bowl. And I'm gonna make a little flower top because this is a nice romantic dish with a blowtorch. And then I'm just gonna take a couple of the kernels of corn that I roasted and I'm gonna sprinkle those as well on top. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. A wonderful, delicious torched bell pepper and torched corn soup for your eating enjoyment and fun in the kitchen with a blowtorch. And I am going to dig in and try this torched bell pepper and torched corn soup. I mean, I hate to say it, but I know it's good because I made it. Um, it's just, it's really good. It's got a nice spice to it at the same time. It's not overly thick. It's the perfect consistency for a nice bell pepper soup. Um, if you like heat, by all means, this is the way to go. If you aren't a big fan of heat, I'd say take out a little bit of the cayenne and the uh, crushed red pepper flakes. If you want to, you can even get sexier with it at home. Add a little sour cream or a little creme fraiche. You could even do like a lime sour cream to go with it. Add in maybe some baking crumbles, of course. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, it's delicious. Totally can go with this. And uh, it's just a great starter. That being said, food deconstructed dish number one with a blowtorch, with a blowtorch. Fire, fire. Let's move on to dish number two, shall we?